next value that's really important is the transmission. Now we're getting to something that, yeah, the more the merrier. Um, the higher the transmission, the brighter the image, the um, less gain that's required from the camera, and so the less noise that will be produced by the camera if it's in an auto gain um, situation. So um, we care about the transmission of the endoscope, and it's just like what you what you would think it is. It's the um, the amount of light that's able to go through the uh, lens system. We're not talking about the fiber optic illumination, and uh, so it's always with respect to some reference, and I'll be getting into that very much detail on choosing that reference. In a way, it doesn't matter, because what you're more interested in is saying, hey, I've got this new stored scope, I've been using it, um, we can turn the light up um, to a reasonable level. I can see uh, what I need to see in the center of the field. Um, now I just got this scope repaired, and I've asked the uh, wandering nurse to turn the light all the way up, and I still can't see um, uh, a bright enough image in the center. Next really important characteristic concerns transmission, and it's the uh, uniformity. of transmission. The technical word for that is vignette. So, uh, again, uh, the surgeon says, got the scope repaired. Yeah, I can turn the light up and I can see um, what I need to see bright enough in the center of the image. But I used to be able to see what was going on at the edge of the field, and now I can't. It's always dim. Um, and if I turn the light up more, and I can see what's going on at the edge of the field, well, now the center of my field is saturated. And I've got a whiteout condition. I can't see anything. It's too much for the dynamic range of the camera. So um, uh, this is actually a, a very difficult um, part of the um, optical designer's task when they're designing an uh, endoscope to have a, a very small level of vignetting which, which translates to a high uniformity of the transmission. Um, you can think about it, you know, kind of logically. If I'm, you know, putting the light through here and it's going straight through the lenses, yeah, that's a lot easier than getting all the light that's going up and down, up and down, getting through the lens system. And uh, it's the lens designer's job to um, reduce the uh, amount of vignetting to a small uh, value. The tint of the image. Is it yellowish? I call this coloration. Again, this is a pretty straightforward um, kind of concept. You've got something flesh colored, you want it to translate flesh colored um, through the optical system. Um, uh, oftentimes, uh, the glasses won't transmit blue as effectively as the other colors, and a, a lack of blue uh, means kind of a yellowish image. Um, the anti-reflection coatings on the individual lens components in an endoscope, uh, when you have 30 air-to-glass interfaces and you're off in your uh, anti-reflection coatings by a very small amount, it can uh, drastically adjust the tint of the image. Um, if the repair organization puts in uh, new lenses and they don't have the proper anti-reflection coatings, you can um, have the effect of having a, a yellowish image. Measuring endoscope brightness is a completely automatic operation. Simply insert the target, adjust the distance so that the edge of the field aligns with the circle, 
click TVC to start the measurement and all measurements brightness, vignetting, and coloration are done simultaneously.